<laughs> That's my choir voice. What do you think? <laughs> You're, I like it. Yeah. I once had a doo doo. I once had a doo doo. It was little and brown. It was little and brown. And the dootiest doo doo. That dootied all over town. He dootied here. He dootied there. He dootied everywhere. He dootied in my underwear. My duty, my little duty do. I will love my little duty. And he loves me. Oh, my little duty, he loves me. <laughs> oh, yeah. I can only do angelic choir boy voice. <laughs> and my little, little duty. <laughs> <laughs> That's my you can do castrati because do you know what castrati singers are are those the boys who get their nuts chopped off <laughs> yes. to sing high? and they sing uh, yeah they and then in the church too they're always singing church music that's all it jesus christ my jesus christ. my jesus which is exactly what they did when they cut their balls off. <laughs> they went, Jesus <laughs> Christ! <laughs> yeah, that's that's my singing style. They're high. They're high. I, my, the, if I could describe my voice to people, I guess I'll start describing it as castrati. It'd be castrati? Castrati <laughs> singer? Yeah. That's hilarious. Because it is. I can only do like that high-pitched kind of... My kinda. balls are gone! <laughs> <laughs> That's really all I can do. Otherwise, I can't keep a tune. What do you think? And I don't know why I do can this. Only do this with do me. I'm your I'm your son. I'm your son, and you're my mom. And you're uh, telling me that I have to. Uh, I'm about to be a castrati singer for the church. It's a big deal for our family. Listen to me, son. Yeah. You are a castrati singer. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. You are gonna be a castrati singer. What does that mean? I'm gonna sing in the church. I'm just going to sing. I'll sing in the church. Oh, yeah. You're going to sing in the church, all right. It doesn't entail anything else? You're going to sing in the church, boy, and you're not going to have any nuts. <laughs> what? Sing, and you're <laughs> sing high. Excuse me? What, mama? <laughs> you heard me, boy. <laughs> you heard me, boy. I said you ain't going to have nuts. I said you ain't going to have nuts when you're singing. <laughs> So you can so you can sing real high. You gotta sing real high, Cause boy. You, Cause you gotta sing high to get to Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right, welcome though. Working Crafts Podcast with Lauren and Joshua. Uh, that's Lauren. Hello. And I'm Joshua. Hello. <laughs> and uh, we're going to talk about some stuff today. So uh, we have a really exciting episode for you today because we're going to do a little, uh, we're going to start a little contest, uh, but we'll get to that a little bit later because I, Lauren sent me this and I cannot wait <laughs> to start talking about it. All right. Now, now, first of all, to, even before we start. Forgive us. Yeah. This, we're not trying to be, we're not trying to be homophobic. We're not trying to be transphobic. We're not trying to be any kind of phobic. We just think that maybe if you send your kids off to a sex camp, it's not a good idea. Is that fair? I think that's fair to say. Well, then let's get into it. Kentucky summer camp teaches children to masturbate and have sex on drugs. Sign me up. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, uh, what is the Gazette? Is this is this a legitimate? Did you send me something that's like fake news? Uh, uh, no. Is the I Gazette uh, an an honored institution? No, I I don't know if they're an honored institution, but I think they're like a local, m maybe not local. I, I don't know. They're a Kentucky newspaper. Oh, they're in the they're in Kentucky. Like this is the maybe a state newspaper, and I don't so, know how how popular this uh, particular summer camp is. Yeah, I don't know how popular <laughs> this summer camp is, especially if it's in Kentucky. I couldn't tell you how popular it is. Here's the thing. Yeah, Kentucky. Why is this in Kentucky? This is my first question. <laughs> is 
like is this is something I thought would be in Portland, Oregon, right? It'd Hell be yeah. like it, you know we're encouraging sex sexual education for children, and and like partially I understand it, but but when it gets to like young children, it's like well they're let's say this. If you're below the age to consensually have sex, maybe we shouldn't be like starting on the sex ed. Yeah. Right? So like it's against the law for you to have sex. So therefore, <laughs> maybe you shouldn't start learning about how to do it yet. <laughs> Masturbation, I mean, I started way before I was of age. Well, I don't know that you need a summer camp for this. I feel like this is like you know, a, a lesson that you have in school. Like. In the shower. When, you, <laughs> yeah, when, when the you're gym, going through puberty. With your gym teacher. <laughs> <laughs> your gym teacher's like, let me teach you how to masturbate. <laughs> Yeah, that is exactly how I learned how to <laughs> masturbate. My, it wasn't my gym teacher, unfortunately. It was my janitor. <laughs> he goes, "Hey boy, hey white boy, let me teach you how to masturbate." <laughs> he said, "Come here, I need to clean something out for you." <laughs> <laughs> you got a lot of dirty inside of you, boy. Let me get it out of you. Did you know you can get all the dirty inside of you out if you just wiggle your dingus around a little bit? <laughs> I was like. <laughs> I was like, you're the janitor, sir. And he's like, and that's why I'm committed to cleaning. I got to clean out all the dirty inside of your balls. I'm going to swivel the balls, swivel the shaft. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, Kentucky summer camp teaches children to masturbate and have sex on drugs. Let's read this Uh, A Kentucky-based virtual sex education summer camp taught young attendees how to masturbate, obtain an abortion, and have sex while on drugs. Because that's the one thing that children need to learn is to have an abortion. Um, I hope that when we raise our daughter, the first thing she's going to learn is not how to say dada or mama. It's going to (laughs) be... How to say abortion? Abortion. Abortion, please. Abortion, please. How many of the how many of the female comedians that we've seen in Chicago, <laughs> whose whose opening line in their act is uh, so I've had twelve abortions. You know, <laughs> you know that. Mm-hmm. Have you heard that before? Any? Have you ever heard any female comedian do that here in Chicago? I've never heard a single female comedian ever talk about the topic of abortion. <laughs> I don't. I don't think. It comes up. I don't think they they know what it is. I don't think they do it. Um, I once. I think it among female comedians, that's unheard of. I once in went my to an, opinion. I want. I once <laughs> went to an all female showcase, and it was it was one hundred. Every single act <laughs> began with "I've had eleven abortions. I've had ten abortions. <laughs> I've had twelve abortions." <laughs> It's all about, hi, my name is Stephanie. I've had 13 abortions. And then the whole crowd goes. They go, woo! Woo! <laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> We're in Kentucky. Hell yeah! <laughs> this is the thing. And this is the weird thing. I, I Let's get back to this. Kentucky summer camp teaches kids how to masturbate and have sex on drugs. This, like, partially I'm like, okay, this is going to go into, like, and uh, I, my my first impression is this is going to go into like LGBT, like trying to introduce students into mm-hmm. sexuality and 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 sexual education, mm-hmm. which wa- like I don't one hundred percent disagree with, but it depends on how young the kid is, and uh and then like especially like a summer camp to teach them how to masturbate. Anyway, I would think that this would happen in Portland, Oregon or, or, or I don't know, Seattle, Washington or, or any, I don't know any of those like, you know, woke cities, but Kentucky. Now I start to think, is this just a bunch of rednecks? Like, like big old boys sitting back in their stools, whittling, whittling a little, uh, whittling little dildos, whittling little little dildos. Go, listen here, kids, I'm going to teach you something you can do with your dingus, okay? <laughs> Welcome to Kentucky. One of the th- one of our pastimes in Kentucky is we whittle our little dingus up until we until we make a little sauce. We're going to be whittled. And then we use that sauce for our secret Kentucky fried recipe. <laughs> we're going we, to be whittling little wood dinguses today. 
<laughs> I hope you kids is ready for whittling little wood dinguses. Did I say whittling or woodland? <laughs> you said whittling little wing dinguses. <laughs> You said dingluses too in there, but I get what you were saying. You were saying, you saying. whittling little dinguses. Yeah, that's what I meant. You, you're making little wood dinguses out of wood because yeah. you're whittling them in Kentucky. Yeah. Now, and that's the secret recipe of the Kentucky Fried Chicken. Did you know that? <laughs> is is little kid little recipes. <laughs> little recipes that come from the inside. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Kentucky Fried Recipes out of the sexy sex ed camp. It was a virtual camp based out of Hazard, Kentucky that took... Oh, wait. <laughs> That's not a red flag? <laughs> that it's in Hazard, Kentucky? <laughs> it's the city's named Hazard? The city's name is Red Flag, Kentucky? <laughs> it, it, it's one thing to be a parent that's like, I'm going to send my kids to the sexy sex ed camp. That You've already abandoned <laughs> all of your responsibilities as a parent. And then immediately afterwards, you go, in Hazard, Kentucky. Well, nothing bad ever happened in Hazard, Kentucky. <laughs> Can't imagine nothing bad happening there. They uh, that took place in the summer of 2021. Oh, in the height of the pandemic, were they wearing masks when they learned how to masturbate? <laughs> <laughs> you gotta have a mask over your face, but 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 your 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 dangus and and your cooter need to be wide open. Wide open. <laughs> Make sure to use an M95 mask because the other ones are ineffective. But make sure to have that cooter big and open for us. We only care about covering one orifice at this camp, and it ain't cooter. <laughs> <laughs> and it ain't your DD hole either. <laughs> Your DD hole is my new <laughs> word for my pee hole. Your DD hole. You can't open that DD hole either. No, you got to keep that DD hole open. You don't put a mask on that thing. Unless you want to use a condom. Have you ever heard of a condom, children? <laughs> Uh, the organizers have been operating sex education workshops for children since 2012. Their organization is called NAMBLA. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, according to their website. Interesting. So the, uh, the, gr the camp first gained attention on Twitter Tuesday after the account Libs of TikTok. Of course, if you make <laughs> Libs of TikTok, you really need to reevaluate. Like, have I gone a little too far? Yeah, probably. And here's the thing, like, you can also watch, if you want to see, like, the, libs of TikTok is really the extreme of the left. If you want to see the extreme of the right, go watch Jordan Klepper and the, and the Daily Show segments where he'll go to the rallies and he'll talk to literally the dumbest people over there. Libs of TikTok is the dumbest of the left. Yeah, it's, it's the same kind of thing. It is. It 100% is. But it is entertaining. Oh, like, you can't deny yeah. that that's not entertaining. Hey, and you know what? Even, like, I'll, you got to admit, the Jordan Klepper stuff is all also entertaining. Yeah, it's equally entertaining. It's, it, they're both equally entertaining, but it, at, at some point... Watching you can't, extreme weirdos on any side yes, <laughs> is entertaining. It's very entertaining. Here's here's one thing I'll, I'll recommend. If, you, if you're listening to our podcast and you're extremely on the left, you really enjoy watching Jordan Klepper go after like left-wing people. Try a Will Witt video from Prager U. And watch him go to watch him go to university. Here's the here's the deal though. He's talking to to stupid people on the left. But to be fair, he's talking to the dumbest people on the left. Anyone who like anyone who like pushes back on him, he's gonna cut out of the video. Like Prager U's not gonna allow someone to go, oh yeah, yeah, I don't really believe that at all. I actually believe that the answer is somewhere in the middle and we we need to find middle ground with each other. Yeah. No one's gonna say like Well, it doesn't make for good, you know content. Yeah. To have somebody who is being rational, level headed and open minded. Like cut that. 
no. Cut, cut that, cut that, cut that, cut get that. Get that crap out of here. Get that crap out of here. <laughs> it's not going to get clicks. It's not going to get attention. Yeah. So it, it, it truly is the same thing. Jordan Klepper is the exact same well, thing. Well, I think it's, it's like, because it doesn't elicit some sort of emotional response in the viewer. And yeah. what they want is for the the viewer to have, like, the emotional release because that's what gets you clicking back on the videos is, oh, this this made me angry. i got to watch more things to make me angry. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Look at how stupid they are. And But really, I mean, here's the thing is, like, our parents never, I mean, because they didn't have smartphones that were connected to the Internet that hyper-connected us to everyone in the world at all points in time. Yeah. So our parents would have to deal with, like, two stupid people a month. Yeah. We have to deal with every stupid person in the world every day. Yeah. And that's tough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, you can't, like, why, th- let's focus on what's happening in the real world. And when you see a stupid person online, th- just let it, go- let, let, let it go. That's a stupid person. They've existed before and they'll always exist. Yeah. I mean, get a good laugh out of it first. Oh, yeah. <laughs> get a good laugh out of Watch it. Watch that dum dumb <laughs> slip and fall on his booty, baby. <laughs> but then you can, <laughs> you know, let it go. <laughs> All right, sorry. Back to back to back to this. Uh, the camp first gained attention on Twitter Tuesday after the account Libs of TikTok and Manhattan Institute scholar Christopher Rufo shared information about the camp, including details about the camp curriculum, which included a workshop on masturbation in which participants learn techniques to make the most of their masturbation experience. Now, here's the thing I haven't gotten yet. What what is the age group here? They need to put this up top. Are we going to find out in this article? You sent me this. I, I, I didn't. I literally just saw the title and thought it was funny. And so I sent it to you. It's already said, well, you know, workshops for children, young attendees. But here's the thing is like, no, I don't want to. I don't want to click on the picture of the children condoms. <laughs> Of the little kid condoms. These are our crocheted children's condoms that we made in arts and crafts. <laughs> um, oh, here we go. It even says the age ranges for the 2021 camp were not listed on the website and is not known if the camp will be held again in 2022. Well, I would say that's that's a hazard. If the age ranges for sexy ed summer camp are not listed. Well, it's just it's just the most important aspect of all of this. Yeah. Like, I mean, and we'll get to this. It just does say among the sessions of the camp were the three P's, pee, poop, and pleasure. Now, if this means <laughs> if this means, you know, uh five year olds at this camp. Jesus fucking Christ, like this is a pedophile camp. If this means like children who are going through puberty and the idea is sexual education as you're coming through puberty, I, 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 I'm I, all for it. But then also you're teaching them how to masturbate. That is weird. Um, I had sex education and it was fine. And they, I learned how to let me say, let me tell you this. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt. I learned how to crush puss <laughs> on my own. I didn't need you don't need your school or a summer camp to teach you how to crush puss. Well, I, I'm sorry. Well, Joshua, you know, some women really have a hard time finding their G spots and, you know, the things that make them... They need camp counselors they... to show them where the G spots are? Well, if there's one thing I know about camp counselors, it's that they're really good at finding the G spots, so... <laughs> <laughs> wow. No, I, I kind of feel like... I don't understand why you need a summer camp, because... Summer camp to me sounds like, you know, a a week at minimum yeah. to like a month long thing. At, you know what I mean? For this, I I can't imagine that this is would be more than a month. But I mean, listen, if I was 13 years old and I went to a summer camp that was all about masturbating. No, you'd be all into it. Oh, my <laughs> God. That would have been cool. If I was five years old, I would have been traumatized yeah i'm just saying the premise of let's do sex education but as a summer camp as a summer camp is stupid because it does it you don't need that long of a period of time to do that just i mean in in my schools elementary and high school it was literally like a day 
Same here. Yeah, I it was a day. Like we had intermediate every- school, which was between elementary and middle, and uh, it was like sixth grade. Like when when once you're hitting like twelve, thirteen. Um, I had like a day in fourth grade, day in fifth grade, fourth grade. Yeah, but it wasn't anything. That's more like you know you're getting you know your pits are getting stinky. Put deodorant. Here's some on. deodorant. Here's some deodorant. You know what I mean? You might get a little hair in your armpits. Like. Basic. Ladies, ladies, shave it. <laughs> <laughs> Did the school say that? Did, do you learn that at school? Do they go, ladies, you should probably shave it. Yeah, they literally hand every little fourth grade girl a razor and they go, you better shave your dirty, hairy pits, you do, filthy. <laughs> do they really? <laughs> no. Do they say anything about well, shaving I mean, your... not my school. They didn't do that. The, did they say anything at all, though, about to women? Because I don't get to sit in the women's one. When I was growing up, it's separated. <laughs> you know, the girls sit... Uh, the girls have <laughs> something with one nurse, and the boys have something with a yeah. coach, <laughs> with a football um, coach. <laughs> and the football coach <laughs> is like, listen, these ladies, they got a thing once a month called a period. <laughs> now, sometimes you're going to find that your girls that are your friends act real cranky. Around <laughs> one time a month. That's because they got vaginas. Now, what vaginas means is because they's bleeding. <laughs> we grew up in Texas. Let me yeah, clarify. Yeah, we grew up in Texas. Um, yeah, I th- well, I don't think they... I think they basic. From my recollection, it was basically, you know, here you're going through puberty. These are the changes that you might experience. Yeah. And... They, I think they did talk about, like, you might decide to shave. Yeah. But I don't think they ever were like, we're going to teach you how to do it. Let yeah. me hand you a razor. Yeah. Let me get you started right now. You won't make sure to get the butthole real good now. <laughs> <laughs> Them boys, they love that butthole. And they want it smooth <laughs> now, girls. No, I, just, I don't think they, they really, like, do that. It's more so just to tell you that you might decide that that's something you want to do mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. more it was just like you, you might get stinky so take a bath you know occasionally because all y'all fifth graders stink <laughs> <laughs> y'all are starting to stink now <laughs> put that deodorant on now <laughs> yeah stuff like that stuff like for for girls definitely like you might be starting your period so you're gonna want to you know, you don't want to be constantly washing your underwear and having to leave class because you've made a mess in your pants. Mm. Like, yeah. you might want to know the tools that can make life a little easier for well, you. Well, I wish I would have sat in the <laughs> girls because in high school I had diarrhea <laughs> in my pants. <laughs> I thought I was going to make it to the rest. This is true. I thought I was going to make it to the restroom. And I was like, I was like, oh, my tummy hurts. And I was like, oh, I just have a little fart. And I just <laughs> diarrhea uh, completely in the middle of my high school And as a high school student I was like My life <laughs> is uh, over <laughs> And uh, I had well, my mom I called my mom in the restroom On my cell phone And I was like Mom can you please come get me I had diarrhea in my pants well, And she <laughs> never let me let it down And still to this day She'll go Remember when you got diarrhea in your pants I had to come pick you up from school <laughs> That was so funny. And then you'll tell her, oh, remember when you did this thing? And she goes, that's not funny. I'm your mother. <laughs> you can't tell her anything. I'm sorry. Anyway. When you go to family events, does she point and you'd be like, this diarrhea boy right here. Everybody laughing. I'm diarrhea sure boy. she'd love to. I'm sure that would be great. <laughs> she go, <laughs> look here. Hey, I remember that. I, I guarantee at our wedding, uh, she's going to bring it up. She'll say, <laughs> she'll at our wedding at some point, she'll tap on the glass. Ding, 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 ding. And have everyone like stop what they're doing and listen. And she goes, I just want to make a speech. I just want to, oh my God, everyone, I just want to tell you, oh my God, this one time Joshua just shit his bridges, just diarrhea in his bridges. I had to go pick him up from school. I just want y'all to know that. And I'm so proud of y'all. And congratulations on the, on the wedding. <laughs> <laughs> well, based off what I learned in my uh, the puberty changing bodies class, is yeah. that uh, an absorbent pad with wings might have might have helped prevent that. <laughs> or if you're if you're old enough, st- stick a tampon up your booty hole because that might stop the flow. <laughs> oh, and that's what I should have done. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> 
we, All do, right. we do not endorse sticking tampons up your butt. Yes, <laughs> children, if you're listening, first of all, this is not a child. This is called Working Crass Podcast. Yeah, yeah if you're listening, And you're stop. a child, stop. Um, but if you're not a child and you're listening and you've ever considered putting <laughs> a tampon up your butt to stop your flow of diarrhea, don't. Ma- no, maybe try it. <laughs> no, don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I say don't. Joshua says try it. You, say try. you come back with a report for us on which one is right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Back to this Kentucky summer camp that teaches kids how to masturbate. Using visual and performance art, open dialogue, and popular education methods, sexy sex ed fills a vital gap in reproductive education as a creative cultural healing solution in rural Appalachia. Um, from July 6th to August 26th. How long is that? That's a long time. Yeah, that is a long that's time. more than a month. Yeah. That's like that's a month and a half. That's almost yeah, two months. That's all al- yeah, you're right. That's almost two months. The workshop that exp- is way too long. Way too long for too, what this way too long. Like what how how much information? Like wait. To be fair, I don't think that 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 they're saying here that that is when the camp went to it's just saying from july 6 to august 26 2021 the workshop expanded to a virtual summer camp that charged attendees up to 500 dollars. so i think that this was like an open attendance from this period to this period it's not like your kids are going away to the masturbation camp for two months <laughs> It might not be fair of us to say your kids, these kids went to, went away to jerk off camp. Your kids for two went away months. to masturbation camp for two months and they came back dry as the Sahara. <laughs> <laughs> I had so much fun at come camp, mama. <laughs> what do you think this camp's uh, ropes course is like? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Among the sessions of the camp. <laughs> among the sessions of the camp were the three P's, P, poop, and pleasure. Now, this is so funny because well, I, as a former teacher, I had several students that, that, you know, would go, I have to poop, Mr. Zuar. I have to poop. You know, they would tell me. And um, it's, I, I just imagine at this camp, as soon as a student says, I have to poop, they go, great, come to the front of the class. Let's demonstrate this for everyone. (laughs) The three P's, one of them is happening right here. And guess what? Pee, poop, and pleasure are all tied together, students. You can have a lot of fun. I need need one. (laughs) So Marcus needs to poop. Okay, I need one student with a free and open, clean chest. (laughs) We can have Marcus poop on. Uh, please lay down. And Marcus, if you could aim your butthole over uh, <laughs> Bobby's chest. <laughs> Marcus, really get that butthole right. Um, sex on drugs was another one of the um, uh, workshops. Now, that's interesting for children. Because, you know, kids, like little kids... They're they're definitely want to they're gonna want to know about the intricacies of illicit drug use and how to have sex while high. Right, right. I, and they're gonna understand it all perfectly. I just imagine just a a a camp counselor or a teacher that is, um, uh, you know, just <laughs> uh, short blue hair that's just like I had sex with a Latin man when I was on ecstasy, and it was the best experience of my life and I just wanted you children to know that if you ever want to take ecstasy and have sex with a Latin man it's worth it because Latin men are lovers (laughs) (laughs) and he treated me right (laughs) oh and this is the best one this is the one that if I was a kid... Well, it, it's Appalachia, so sex on drugs is going to be probably meth-based. If if, if, if my uh, geography and stereotypes tell me anything about Appalachia... Here's how you have sex with that goddamn bear that keeps haunting my dreams. First, you got to gape his hole. <laughs> <laughs> now this is but this is the last workshop here that they mention over sexualization and policing of blackness. 
Now that's a, already in the title of the, in the title of the workshop. I'd say that's pretty kid appropriate. A, a, a child appropriate for sure, but then also um, a lot of subjects in one workshop: over over sexualization and policing of blackness. Yeesh, that's a lot of stuff to cover. But children's minds are like sponges. They can soak it all up really easily. They're really going to understand these high-level concepts. Like now, these advanced theories coming out of, 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 of these social science studies. Children, they get it. They get it. <laughs> They're smart. They get it. <laughs> I learned how to masturbate, and I learned that... George Floyd was. Un- <laughs> I learned how to make by my the police. <laughs> I learned how to make my wiener go boom boom and 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 I George l- Floyd no breathe. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I learned how to poop on my friends, <laughs> and I learned that white. Supremacy is everywhere and is as prevalent today as it was in any era (laughs) of American history. (laughs) Be right back, Mama. I have to poop on my friend. I learned how to make my wiener get real hard and that we should join the workers' revolution, Mama. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) Mama, (laughs) I learned how to flick my bean (laughs) and I learned also that... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> we have to fight back against the power the uh <laughs> the, the corrupt patriarchy mama mama i learned two in the pink one in the stink <laughs> and we're not free until all black lives are free <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's just he- that's heavy. That's heavy. Yeah. That's so much for yeah. a kid to process. That's I don't know. Like I just man, I thought summer camp was supposed to be light and fun. Like go to an arts and crafts table and make a lanyard. You know, not <laughs> have heavy conversations about policing black people. I wouldn't recommend that they make a lanyard because they're going to make it out of the children's gum for <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, We're going to teach you to make your ropes into a lanyard. Sexy Sex Ed was founded by Tanya Turner, which definitely doesn't sound like a porn star name, who describes herself as a femme, fat, queer, magical pleasure worker, educator, and artist. Now, okay, so already I, I was thinking that maybe this was a weird Kentucky thing, and I said that maybe it's not you know a queer kind of uh, thing for kids but unfortunately i was wrong it is i honestly i don't have a problem with any of it except the term magical magical pleasure <laughs> worker <laughs> like educator and i don't artist. think you get to decide that you're magical yeah you know what i mean look i i, I don't have a problem with any any female or male that describes themselves as femme, fat, queer, magical pleasure worker, educator, or artist. Can I just say that maybe teaching little kids how to masturbate is a little pedophilic? Is can I say that, please? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, does it does it imply that I'm phobic of any of these? I don't know. I just yes. Fucking, I don't think so. Yes. What? I can't I can't just maybe think that there might be a problem with teaching kids how to masturbate or how to have sex on drugs. What? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you make Tanya Turner angry. <laughs> Headshots and biographies of Turner and other educators with sexy sex ed were available on their website early in the afternoon on Tuesday, but were taken down sometime after 1 30 PM as tweets by Rufo highlighting the camp's activities went viral. Oh, they had to cover it up. Sexy sex ed did not respond to a request for comment. The workshops put on by sexy sex ed had been profiled by CNN amongst 
other news outlets. Interesting. And I wonder mm. how CNN profiled this sexy sex ed. It was probably something like brave, powerful organization decides to teach sex ed to the unfortunate children who well, have had who've had sex ed taken from them by the racist bigoted southerners <laughs> they probably don't even put the sex part in there they say a, a beautiful brave education camp <laughs> education camp yeah yeah <laughs> they just leave that part out <laughs> Very huh. interesting. Is that the whole thing? All I know is sign yeah, me up. The whole thing. Sign me up. Well, sign me up too. I mean, I'd like to learn some masturbation techniques. Don't get me wrong; it'd be fun to learn how to d- jerk it a little newer. Uh, but um, <laughs> yeah, si- sign me up. Yeah, I, I just is it is it wrong of me to say that maybe we don't teach children. How to, how to master? You know what? Here's the thing. I masturbated. No one, none of my teachers ever said, "Here's how you do it. You gotta take your fingers like you're holding a pencil, because <laughs> your penis is small <laughs> right now. It's gonna get bigger, and you can hold it like you're holding a hammer. But you gotta hold it like a little pencil first, <laughs> because you got a tiny little dingus." And you're going to jerk it up and down for a little while. It's going to feel tickly. And you're going to go, oh, that's tickling. I feel like I'm going to pee. You're not going to pee. Don't worry. You're just going to (laughs) come. Like, no teacher ever had to explain this. You just figure it out on your own as you're, you know, growing older. Yeah. 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 And maybe it's the parent's job to maybe talk about sex. Yeah, I think when so. When they're comfortable. Yeah. But as we learned on our last episode, you know, parents man. have no, uh, no, no rights. rights. No rights. No mm. rights for parents. Rights for magical sex pleasure workers <laughs> only. <laughs> 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 I just, I just want to know, like, do the kids still get to go to, like, the lake? Is there, is there, like, you know... The lake? Like, normal they're summer They're too camps. busy yeah. shooting ropes <laughs> off. <laughs> What are you talking about? <laughs> These kids are squirting. They're not going to go to the lake. Well, how do you think the lake gets filled? <laughs> <laughs> I got to take the canoe on Squirt River this summer <laughs> camp. It was awesome. There's got to be one like super straight kid at this summer camp. It's like, this camp is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I rock climbed up Booby Canyon. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I got my dick sucked at summer camp, and it was part of the class. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought I'd get my dick sucked, <laughs> especially not within the curriculum. <laughs> <laughs> when I first learned what dick sucking was, I was like, that's cool. I never thought I'd get an A plus for it. <laughs> I never thought I'd get to show my mom a progress report. I give this summer camp two balls up. <laughs> 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 oh my god <laughs> This summer camp was Fucking sweet <laughs> Oh man <laughs> Well if you're listening to this uh, Thank you very very much for listening to Working Crass Podcast with Josh and Lauren uh, You can always check us out on uh, Social media and Instagram at Working Crass Pod uh, You can send us an email if you want at Working Crass Podcast at gmail.com If you send us an email maybe we'll read it Here on the uh, podcast uh, I'd love for somebody to reach Out and just tell us something Tell us about your childhood Tell us about your <laughs> sexual education <laughs> And uh, yeah, tell us about school. your sexy sex at summer camp. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're also uh, our podcast is on YouTube video versions. If you're watching this right now, thank you for watching. Um, if you're listening to this on a podcast, we're available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and thanks for listening to the audio of this. Um, I hope we're not too loud or too soft. I hope that we're just. 
just right. Just right. Now, uh, <laughs> this next part of the show, I'm very, very excited. Yeah, this is for. your contest. This is the contest. This is, yeah. Now, tell them about your contest idea that you've started. So, uh, I, hey, it's not just me. We both get to take uh, credit on this, okay? Okay. Um, because w- what what I want to do, <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'll take credit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what I'm really excited to do here is we're gonna have a little bit of a competition. Okay. Um, let's call it an awards show, if you will. <laughs> um, I would like to know what the best. Celebrity apology of 2021 was Ooh. so. I have this article from the Washington Post. I'll pull it up right here, and it is the 10 weirdest celebrity apologies of 2021. And guess what? They've done this for every year. So if we if if this episode is successful, we can go back year after year, and also we could do future years every single year. This could be an annual thing we do. So the Celebrity Apology Awards. The Celebrity Apology Awards. The CAAs. <laughs> Should we come up with a song for it? Oh, I like this idea. Um, how would it go? You start. Okay. The Celebrity Apology Awards. The Celebrity Apology Awards. For celebrities are saying sorry. Celebrities are saying sorry. Oopsie doopsie, I made an apology. Oopsie doopsie, I made an apology. I made a mistake and I gotta apologize. And my apology was the best apology of all. 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 Oh, that sucked. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I thought it was great. (laughs) We'll do a different song every time. We'll come up with a new one. (laughs) (laughs) Every time it'll be a new theme song. Um, So uh, what I want to do here is we're going to go through these celebrity apologies. Now, uh, in order to pick the best, what are we going to go off of here? Because I'm kind of. Oh, yeah, because we have to come up with like parameters for what constitutes the uh, best apology. Right. What makes a good apology? Well, I don't know. Or, uh, do we do we want to go off of because like, I don't know. Do I want someone who's like groveling or, you know, just like really actually sorry for what they did? Or do we want to pick somebody who who kind of gave a like sarcastic apology? It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Whatever. Well, maybe there's different categories like oh. like most sincere, most sincere, uh, m- uh, most sarcastic, most. OK, OK. Um. Let's just do those two. Let's say let's say we have to pick a most sincere apology, the person that we believe is the most sincere, and we also have to pick the um most insincere apology, the, the one that we've the decided. I'm sorry not sorry. The sorry not sorry award. Yeah. Now, we better remember these things. We had the sorry not sorry award and we got the I'm truly sorry award. Yeah. And then we also have to give one out for um Best use of pandering. Ooh, best panderer. Yeah. Because I was thinking, and this is going to keep going, we might have to give an award for most fuckable celebrity because these celebrities, they're hot, right? We got to decide which one do we want to fuck? Which oh, one yeah, has that a good too. body? That yeah, too. we have to absolutely okay. do that. Okay. All right. Are we going to remember all this? No, we're not going to remember <laughs> any of this. But it's going to go where it's going to go. Uh, we talked about narrowing it down to three and then having a guest on our next podcast. And, uh, all right. And, uh, like, kind of doing the top three. But maybe we won't. Um, (laughs) Just depends on how this goes. So here's the first one. Um, It starts with explaining what the apology was. So this person did a seemingly seductive dance with the Bible. How dare they? Candace Cameron Bure, the Hallmark Christmas queen, is not one to apologize for whatever she believes in. Just look at the in-depth Instagram slideshow she shared about vaccines, which proudly declared, I'm not anti-V, I'm just pro-medical freedom. So all, already, it's they're trying to, tra- the Washington Post is trying to trash her for saying this, right? As they should, because she sounds like just a, 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 a dumpster fire lady oh, absolutely when you start your sentence with i'm not anti-vax you know you're just gonna get some nazi propaganda i just afterwards. think people who are pro-freedom are just garbage that's what i think <laughs> <laughs> 
She did, however, say she was sorry for her TikTok video this summer where she co-opted the Lana Del Rey jealous girl meme in the most confusing way, swaying to the song while holding up the Bible with the caption, when they don't know the power of the Holy Spirit. In an apologetic Instagram story, Bure, whose faith in Christianity are a major part of her brand, said she received comments from angry fans who thought she was trying to be seductive. I was trying to be strong, not sexy, she explained. So let me get this straight because I, I need to understand the context here. So we have a person. No, 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 no. We don't have a person. No, 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 no. What do we have? No. <laughs> no, you're wrong in saying you need to get this straight. There's nothing there's nothing that makes sense about this, okay? Listen, this is this is 2022, Lauren. This is this is not our generation anymore. Like we don't understand you. Like when you, when look at this, look at this, when it says she co-opted the Lana Del Rey jealous girl meme. Do you know what that means? No, that's just words. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> words. I have no idea what any of that means. It means nothing to me. Yeah. Me neither. It's I don't know what that is. Um, if but, you're listening um, and you know what that means, please email workingcrasspodcast at gmail.com. Let us know what the fuck that means. Yeah. What is the Lana Del Rey jealous girl meme? Now, question. Is the jealous girl meme the one where, like, the guy, the meme where the guy is, like, with a girl and he's looking back at the other girl? I thought that that was called, like, Looking at a, at a, girl, at a girl who's girl not my meme? girlfriend meme. Yeah, and what does Lana Del Rey have to do with it? See, I don't, I don't know what's happening here. See, this podcast is is is. And this is why we're good yeah. judges for this competition because we're completely impartial. Oh, you're right, and we're impartial because we have no fucking clue <laughs> what's going on. Right, it's really easy to be impartial. But I'm trying to understand based on what's written here, and it sounds like okay, this this lady danced in a TikTok video, and she happened to be holding the Bible. Yes, and and then her caption in the TikTok was when they don't know the power of the Holy Spirit. So she she Christianity and faith are a major part of her brand, and so she is saying, you know, this is like part of like the the Holy Spirit is an important thing. And so then she, she was saying? criticized for being seductive with the Bible. She mm. says, "I'm trying to be strong, not sexy." And I guess to... her fan base, I'm assuming, is is mostly like Christian because she's a Hallmark Christmas queen so i i'm assuming those like hallmark christmas movie people are big christian yeah yeah um hmm. so I'm, I'm just trying to understand the situation so the the bible she was like i got the bible and the holy spirit has warmed me up so much i want to do a little sexy dance mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is that is that what i'm to take away um Sure. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I think so. I, the idea is like when when they don't know the power of the Holy Spirit. So yes, like the the dancing to the music is like the power of the Holy Spirit. But then somebody says, "Oh, you're being seductive." So you're saying that the power of the Holy Spirit is like sex, which is wrong. And she says, "I'm I'm not. I was trying to be strong, not sexy." Oh, I, I, I... which to be clear, not an apology. It is not an apology. I was trying this, to be strong, not sexy. This is an excuse. It's an excuse. It's not an apology. It's an excuse. So I don't think it qualifies for best celebrity. Mm, uh, but it might qualify for the most insincere apology. For sorry, not sorry. Yep. This might be a good sorry, not sorry. I'm trying to be strong, not sexy. Obviously, I'm showing you that Jesus is strong and the Bible is strong. But I think what makes a clear sorry, not sorry, is they'll start by saying, I'm sorry, sorry if you were upset by this. She literally is like, I'm just explaining what the context of the video yeah, is. Yeah, this isn't sorry, not sorry. This is not sorry. Yeah. So I don't think it qualifies. I don't think you can give this a, a, a spot. And sorry, Candace Cameron, but, dear. But is she hot? Will she qualify for the hotness award? Ooh, great question. And this is why we have the internet, is it not? 
Is it not? Here we go. Let's take a look at the images. Well, first of all, she looks happily married. Um, well, that's hot. You know, I kind of say. Oh, this I know this lady. This is the full house lady. This is the full house lady. This, this is DJ from Full House. This is DJ from Full House? Yeah. Um, yeah. Really? Yeah. DJ's gotten... Sexy. Hot. Yeah, she's nice. Yeah. I got to say, like, she's got a nice smile. She's got nice hair. Okay, well, okay. So while she might not be in the running for most sincere or insincere, um, she's definitely in the running for hottest and most fuckable. And Uh, she did a sexy dance, so I think that also bumps you up. I kind of want to see that sexy dance, but we'll have to look that up at another time. All right, here we go. I just want to say, have mercy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got nine more to go. We're gonna we're gonna kind of fly through these here. Urinated on a fan. Now I we've seen this clip. So we went from making a TikTok video to urinating on a fan. That feels like it escalated real quick. Absolutely. <laughs> In terms of severity. Perfect for our podcast. Urinated on a fan. Now, I've definitely seen this video. We've seen this in a bunch of different podcasts. Brass Against singer Sophia Urista was yeah. in the middle. Uh, her name should be Sophia Urethra. Uh, which <laughs> <laughs> was in the middle of a concert in Daytona Beach, Florida in November. Of course, this happened in Florida. When, in, uh, when she told the crowd she had to go to the bathroom and then did. Proceeded to urinate on a fan. Obviously, footage of this moment went viral. Daytona Beach cop got involved after one person was so upset they decided to file a police report. Urethra posted a statement on Instagram (laughs) emphasizing that she is not a shock artist and didn't mean to offend anyone. I've always pushed the limits in music and on stage. That night, I pushed the limits too far, she wrote. This is awesome. I... It, here's the thing, because I've seen the video. She's not a bad looking like. I if this was like a if this was a big old girl, I'd say no, 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 no. You don't go peeing on your fans. That's that's dirty and disgusting. This was a good looking woman. I just like to think that she's like, I'm not a shock artist. I'm a piss artist. I'm a piss artist. <laughs> I'm not trying to shock anyone. I'm trying I'm to trying pee to, on them. I'm trying to take a piss. She's actually the one who teaches the three P's <laughs> at the Sexy Sex Ed Summer Camp. <laughs> you go to my concert, you'll learn everything you need to know. <laughs> I mean, if I was a big fan of a band and I thought the, the lead singer was hot... And I got to go up on stage and they peed on me. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I'm a pervert, but, oh, that'd be so cool. <laughs> I'd be like, oh, sweet. I'd be like, gross. You're going to stink the rest of the night. And and you're, you're like, going to. This is sweet, dude. <laughs> no, you're going to stink like pee. And your clothes like are going to be wet. Like a hot girl's pee, dude. A hot girl's pee stinks just as bad as a not hot girl. <laughs> well, it depends on how hydrated she is. Okay, I mean, if you're really hydrated, your pee. If not you're at the point, if you're at the point where you're peeing on, you stage, really have to pee. My guess is it stinks. Yeah, she probably had that really dark yellow, orangey, thick, frothy piss that st- stinks. But this isn't about her pee. This isn't about the pee. This mm, is about the apology. I would like to make it a little. About the pee. <laughs> No, okay, you're right, you're right. This is about the apology. She says, um, she says, she's not a shock artist, didn't mean to offend anyone. I've always pushed the limits in music and on stage. That night, I pushed the limits too far. I don't know if it's it's super sincere, because it's still kind of given excuses. That's fair. That's fair. So I don't know if we can put it in that category. I don't think it's pandering. Yeah, I agree. I, I don't agree. feel like it's too pandery. Um, I don't know. It doesn't feel insincere either. Now, is she, and now uh, she might still be in the running, though, for the hottest. So, oh, my uh, God. That's the important thing here is, well, you know... I kind of think she just should have leaned into it, like you said, and changed her name to Urethra, and then Sophia Urethra. Yeah, Here and she then is. you know you get a whole. There she is. Oh my! Getting ready to pee on the boy. 
I mean, she's a she's a good looking gal too. Yeah, but you know what? I'm sorry, Candace Cameron Cameron Beer, hotter. Well, she's smilier. Yeah, and she I is feel smilier. like happiness happiness makes. To be fair, be Candace Cameron Beer looks like a Fox News anchor. That is true. She does look like she's about that, to be like. That is true. What are the leftists doing to our country? <laughs> um, all right, cool. Let's keep going here. Um, made fun of okay, the next person got in trouble for making making fun of BTS fans. Um, CBS late night host James Corden has been famous long enough to know that you should never provoke fans of a massively popular boy band. Nevertheless, he made a couple jokes about BTS, the K-pop superstars, and their appearance at the United Nations General Assembly meeting in September. He said, it actually mocks the first time in 15-year-old girls everywhere find themselves wishing that they were Secretary General of the United Nations Antonio Guterres. Corden said, prompting an outcry from those who know BTS has a fan base of all ages. When the band visited his show last month, Corden tried to make amends. I'm 43 years old and I consider myself to be one of the biggest BTS fans on planet Earth. I hate everything about this one and I hope it doesn't win any of our awards. Honestly, I think his grievance, what he did wrong, is worse than peeing on a fan. 100%. I think... How dare he make fun of BTS? A, gru- a group that 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 is in in the public. How dare he? Doesn't he know that fans of BTS are of all ages? <gasps> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Did I peak the volume? Yes. Let's let's remember that people are listening to this thing. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, but when you make fun of BTS, I get heated. <laughs> I get amped up. You really autistic it out. I did. <laughs> you read there. Read. <laughs> I did because <laughs> he, he he. Honestly, I don't think what James Corden did should be forgiven. Damn, that's I mean, those are powerful words. And I agree. And because, it's mostly because I, his comedy was so bad. Yeah, I would hundred percent agree. <laughs> I agree. James Corden, <laughs> the most guilty and will not win any awards from us because just to be fair, I just don't like the guy. I don't think he's funny. Okay, let's move on. Made fun of Madonna. You know who else you don't make jokes about? Madonna. She Okay, wait. She is a treasure. Yeah, she's a treasure. She's a treasure. I guess you Here's another thing. You know who else you don't make jokes about? No one! After rapper 50 Cent repeatedly <laughs> mocked her lingerie photo shoot on Instagram this month, the pop icon shot back by posting a photo of the two of them from the early 2000s. I guess your new career is getting attention by trying to, to humiliate others on social media. The least elevated choice you could make as an artist and an adult, she wrote. 50 Cent deleted his earlier post, tweeting, Okay, I'm sorry. I did not intend to hurt your feelings. I don't benefit from this in any way. Honestly, this might have my vote for most sincere. Most sincere, for because sure. Because it's honestly like, I, I just don't have time for this nonsense. <laughs> yes. This is a man who is like, it's not worth it. I'm fine. I'm sorry I hurt your feelings. I'm moving on with my life. I guess I'm just confused at what repeatedly mocked means. That's the thing. It's like, okay, so she, uh, he, he mocked her lingerie photo shoot. And then he posted a... F- uh, Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Madonna posted a photo of the two of them together and then said, so how did he mock? How bad was the mocking? How it seems like she reacted pretty crazy. This doesn't look. This doesn't tell me anything. This doesn't tell me anything at all. What the fuck? Um, That's Twitter for you. Never has any information. Yeah, absolutely not. Fuck Twitter. Okay. You know what, though? From this apology, even though we can't, we, we don't know what how he repeatedly mocked her. He says, I'm sorry. I did not intend to hurt your feelings. I don't benefit from this in any way. That's a sincere apology. It is. It really is sincere. And it's somebody who's just like, it's not worth it to contend, like, get into confrontation with you. When I you, don't have time for your nonsense. I'm moving on. So 50 cent in, in the running for most sincere apology. But he can, can we see if he should be in the running for hottest? Absolutely not. 
What? Only a woman can win I hottest. think a man can be in the hottest. I think it should be a co-ed competition. Lauren, we don't have a gay podcast. This is a be, straight podcast. No, this can be a co-ed competition. Okay, well, what do you think? I think he's good looking. But I'm also probably going to think every person you put up and be like, yeah, they're, they're nice. <laughs> I'm not a good judge of that. I'm sticking with my girl Candace Cameron beer. I think he looks nice. I think he's fine. You can, you can, and why don't you go marry him? <laughs> uh, okay, we got. Okay, we, why don't you go marry Candace Cameron? Maybe I will. <laughs> um, I will maybe leave it alone then. Um, <laughs> mom got my pack. This next person <laughs> dated a bandmate's ex girlfriend, rapper and love and hip hop Hollywood star Lil Fizz. Realized that when you break the bro code and date a friend's ex, it makes a stronger statement to atone publicly in front of thousands of people on stage with his former B2K bandmate, Amarion. Do to, who? Who are these people? Uh, They're during their important re- people, Joshua. <laughs> these are important people. During their reunion tour this fall, he told the audience that he had regrets about dating singer April Jones, a Marion's ex-girlfriend and mother of his two daughters, a few years after they broke up. Lil Fizz and Jones are no longer together. I want to stand here humbly and sincerely apologize to you for any turmoil or dysfunction I caused between you and your family, bro, Lil Fizz said, and the two shared a hug. Well, damn, this one might go in the sincere category. I mean, he even said sincerely in the apology. He did. He did. Ah, man. Lil Fizz is rising up there. Now, now, Lil Fizz, how attractive are you? Now, this is the real question. Lil Fizz. Well, in that Appalachia summer camp, they teach you that once you hit puberty, you start getting a little fizz. <laughs> oh, my God. On your nuts. <laughs> <laughs> now, you might get a little fizz. On your nuts now. You know what? All right. I'll go ahead and say it. Um, more than 50 cent, this guy's in the running. Really? Yes. Nah. He's a young looking dude. I bet he shaves his pubes and he's got a smooth shaves his fizz. Smooth voice shaves that. Shaves his peach fizz. (laughs) He's only got a little fizz. (laughs) I don't know. I mean, he's okay. He's all right. I know about this one. Criticized a frozen yogurt shop's food selection. Uh, Demi Lovato has been open about having an eating disorder, so they probably didn't think it would be particularly controversial to post about a Los Angeles frozen yogurt store and offerings labeled guilt-free and diet food. I will be calling out harmful messaging from brands or companies that perpetuate a society that not only enables but praises disordered eating, Lovato wrote in April, adding the hashtag Hashtag diet culture vultures when the store's social media team pointed out that items were not for customers with diabetes and celiac disease, among others. Lovato still ramped up the negative feedback, but eventually even fans suggested that Lovato, who had the upper hand with 121 million Instagram followers, should just leave the big chill alone. Lovato later apologized. I'm sorry that I got the messaging wrong. I'm sorry that I may have disappointed some people. Now this, I'm going to say, might go in for the most insincere apology. I was thinking the exact same thing, mostly because of the some people. I'm sorry that I might have disappointed some people. This is like when you get in an argument with your boyfriend or girlfriend and and you go, (laughs) oh, uh, you know what? I am sorry. I'm sorry you feel that way. Yeah, like they acted completely irrational. Yeah. I'm Com- sorry. You I'm acted s- completely irrational and made it all about you, but mm. I'm sorry you feel that way. <laughs> well, I'm sorry that you feel that way. I'm sorry that some people feel that way. Yep. I'm sorry I may have disappointed some people. Also, this is just crazy. I mean, I love this that they even point out, even fans suggested that <laughs> she has the upper hand with 121 million Instagram followers. Maybe just leave this little frozen yogurt shop alone. So, most insincere? She's in the running? I, I think she's in the running for most insincere. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. We made a huge mistake just now. 
you think they are in the running. They are in the running for most insensitive. I'm sorry. We're sorry. We're sorry. We're sorry. We made such a big mistake in doing that. I can't believe we did that. Appeared topless on a boat with Princess Eugenie. Wait, wait. Husband. I can you go back? Can you go back? Can you go back? I just, I've had, I've had some time to think about what I said. Yes. And I realize that I, I got the messaging wrong, and I'm sorry that I may have disappointed. Some, some people. people. Me too. I'm sorry that I may have disappointed some people. I completely agree with you. Now, are they in the running for uh, for most hot? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Old Demi Lovato? Yeah. New Demi Lovato? Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hell Yeah. Uh, appeared topless on a boat with Princess Eugenie's husband. <laughs> Who's Princess Eugenie? If you don't know who Princess Eugenie is, Joshua, why are we even doing this oh show? God. Oh, my if, God. If there's even a hint of royal I have scandal, no idea who Princess Eugenie is. We're about to find out. I think it was a character in, in the no. movie The Princess Bride. No, 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 no. It says right here. Um, it's, a, prin- it's a character in the never-ending story. It's Prince, An- <laughs> <laughs> it's Prince Andrew's uh, daughter. Uh, if there... E- is even a hint of royal scandal, the internet will be captivated for days, which is exactly what happened this summer when Italian model Erica Pelosini, um, Italian model Erica Pelosini was photographed without her bikini top while on a boat with friends, including Jack Brooksbank, the husband of Princess Eugenie, who is Prince Andrew's daughter and William and Harry's cousin. Following much online chatter about the incident, Pelosini gave an interview to the Daily Mail and explained that when her bikini got wet, she decided to take off her top. It led people to make improper suggestions and jump to conclusions that it's very hurtful that people are thinking this. She said, I'm very sorry if I caused any embarrassment to Princess Eugenie and Jack. I, it wasn't appropriate for me to be topless. Uh, can, I, can I ask, before we talk about the apology here, is... Prince Andrew, the one who was on Epstein Island, I think so. Is yes. he the one? I believe so. Well, then, heck, hit- I I might be wrong. Just to, just to throw that out there, we might be uh, throwing out misinformation. Well, then, who's that one? I I think so. I think it is Prince Andrew. Can we Google it to verify? I guess, but you know, I just I prefer sure. to give out uh, fake information. Um, I mean, I do too sometimes, but I feel like this. I want to know. All right, uh, Prince Andrew Epstein. There we go. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> there's definitely. No, there's no way it's, somebody is going to be tracking your searches. It's definitely President Prince Andrew. Yes. Yeah. Then I would say, uh, given given the circumstances of what he's done, I'd say Princess Eugenie got every right to be topless on a boat somewhere. Princess Eugenie was not topless on a boat. Oh, she wasn't topless. No. Uh, Italian model Erica Polosini was photographed with Princess Eugenie's Husband. Oh, so she saw boobies. Princess Eugenie saw the other person's boobies, and that's what this is about. Uh, well, well, kind of. It's about the fact that her husband was on a boat with a topless woman. I honestly don't understand what's wrong with this scenario. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Hey, that's fine with me. That's fine with me that you don't understand what's wrong. That means when I show up on a boat with a topless woman, you go, I don't see what's wrong with that. But and if I'm was, fine if with she's that. she's on the boat, yeah. then why does it matter? Like, clearly she was okay. Like, she knew what was going on. She saw the boobies. N- n- no. Wait, what makes you think she- that Princess Eugenie was on the boat? Didn't they take a picture together? No, Lauren, you have <laughs> every detail of this wrong. <laughs> I do. <laughs> Princess Eugenie's husband, so um, uh, so the Jack, pr- was on a was on a boat with this Italian model who was topless. There was a photo taken of them. Princess Eugenie was not there. Then where the heck does Princess Eugenie come into play here? She's a princess and her husband is being photographed on a boat with a topless model. 
and the topless model is in trouble for hanging out on a boat with the princess's husband while topless. I appreciate, I appreciate that you do not see what's wrong with this because that's great because, and, and you know what? I'll back you up here. There's nothing wrong with this. Men, men should be allowed to be with any topless woman on any boat that they'd like to be on and, and their wives should keep their fucking mouths shut about it. Well, I'm with you, Lauren. I'm with you, Lauren. I think Jack Brooks Bank should hang out with any of the titties that he wants to. And you know what? Well, I, I think I should, too. <laughs> I'll sign you up for the sexy sex at summer camp. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can get on a canoe with some boobies. <laughs> I'm totally fine with, you know, this guy on a boat with a girl without her bikini top on. Now, I definitely don't believe this apology, though. I, I definitely don't believe... I just... Uh, I, I'm still trying to wrap my mind around, like... <laughs> Was Princess Eugenie upset by the fact that her husband was around boobies? Well, it hasn't necessarily said that, but it's it's so the, she doesn't the care internet. The, the internet is captivated by it. So the so the internet is mad on Princess Eugenie's behalf. What if Princess Eugenie that was her king? The She's inter- like, I want my husband on boats with boobies. Just to be clear, the internet is always mad on behalf of somebody else. Well, it's you're not, right. Yeah, that's you're always right. I, the for case. For a minute there, I I thought too highly of the internet. <laughs> You yeah, brought me back down to reality. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's always on behalf of some person who's not actually mad. <sighs> but she goes, uh, she says that her bikini got wet and she decided to take off her top. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but bikinis are supposed to get wet. They're swimsuits. My bikini top got wet, so I had to take it off in front of the the prince. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of those dry bikinis. <laughs> <laughs> it's supposed to stay dry. And so it's not a big deal. It it wasn't a uh, I, I, I don't mean to cause any embarrassment. I don't want anyone to jump to conclusions. It's just I was just topless with the prince. <laughs> I got. Thank you. Get off. Thank you. I'm sorry. You I'm sorry. I just I got, I got so excited, for a second. You pulled out the cord of up. your headset. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh. Honestly, if you, here's here's all she needed to say. She's like, look, you guys just don't understand. This is a dry bikini. It wasn't meant to get wet, so I had to take the top off. Look, if you went to the sexy set. Sex at summer camp. They would teach you the difference between wet bikinis and dry bikinis, and you would know that this this top had to come off. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's let we got to keep moving on here. Well, oh, so what are you putting this one in? Most most in, insincere. Maybe most insincere, but also let's see how hot this Italian model is. Because, I mean, well, first of all, are the pictures of her topless on this boat available on oh, the internet? Oh my. Um, you know, Jesus, she has such a big head. I'm going to say, say, um, look, uh, I think she has like definitely some kind of like anorexia or something. Cause this woman's head is huge compared to her tiny body. Yeah. She does have a very frail frame and, um, she looks very stern. She looks very stern. Yeah, I've never been into. She I've looks always like been she into got, smiley people. I yeah. like people I who seem like, like they're having right. fun. To me, I don't like the like I'm hot. Yeah, this just seems like I am mad because my bikini top got wet and it should have been dry. Should have been dry. Guess I have to take it off. Yeah, no, I I I don't think we can put her in the running for that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, er, er, Erica. 
Yes. We got three more here. Uh, <laughs> this next person got in trouble for making a bad joke about Whoopi Goldberg. Shark Tank judge Barbara Cor- Corcoran uh, stopped by The View in October, and during a discussion about good American jeans and the company's inclusive sizes, moderator Whoopi Goldberg wandered out loud if the jeans would fit her despite pandemic weight gain. The hosts encouraged her to try them, and for some reason, Corcoran chimed in with, when you get finished with those jeans and you decide you don't like them, give them to me. I'm going to make two pairs. Goldberg looked taken aback, and viewers were not amused. Corcoran apologized that same day on Twitter and said the two are longtime friends. I made a joke at Whoopi's expense, which I now realize wasn't funny. For anyone who I may have offended unintentionally, I just wanted to say I really am very sorry. Now that seems like a uh, like uh, an authentic apology or a sincere apology, but I thought that's kind of funny. I mean, I thought it was kind of funny too. <laughs> <laughs> I and mean, I really, look, I really the joke. Wish, I really wish at the end of her thing, she said, and I just want to say, I really am very sorry, you bunch of fat asses. <laughs> I really am truly sorry. <laughs> Fatty! <laughs> Something like that would have been so funny. Because uh, <laughs> missed opportunity, I suppose, yeah. for comedy. But <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, um... Uh, now, not the best, writ, you know, not the best joke in the world. When you get finished with those jeans and decide you don't like them, give them to me. I'm going to make two pairs. It's a fat joke. But um, what I love, what's fu- what's the funniest like about it. she did it to her face. She did. <laughs> no, exactly. What's the funniest about it. She did it on The View, on her show, <laughs> to her face as a reaction to something that she said. Now, that's hilarious. That's great. <laughs> Shark Tank judge This woman should be a comedian (laughs) Funnier than Whoopi Goldberg these days Um, Up there for the sincerest apology award maybe But I just I don't I could care less about what she did wrong I don't think she did anything wrong Making a joke on a TV show To a fellow To a comedian yeah, Whoopi Goldberg's a comedian, right? Yeah, and they're friends, so I yeah. would assume that she felt comfortable. Like my guess is, she assumed because they're friends, because Whoopi is a comedian, that she felt like this is a joke that Whoopi wouldn't, you know. Well, she be assumed offended. wrong. I guess so. Raised both middle fingers on live TV. Former. Wait, what are we putting that cat in the category? Uh, sincere apology. Oh, really? I said that. Really. You think this is sincere? I made a joke at Whoopi's expense, which I now realize wasn't funny. For anyone who I may have offended unintentionally, I just wanted to say I was really, I really am very sorry. But now read it with a sarcastic tone. For anyone I may have offended unintentionally, I just wanted to say that I really am very <laughs> sorry. Well, you could do that with anything that you read. <laughs> I know. I just wanted to hear it. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Raised both middle fingers on live TV. Former NFL stars Peyton and Eli Manning have a pretty sweet gig with the Manning cast commentary during Monday Night Football on ESPN2. Wait, is the Shark Tank host going to be in the hot category? We didn't look her up. I'm sorry, but we got to play fair. Right? Right? Her name is Barbara Corcoran. There's no way. Sounds hot. There's no way she's hot. hot. Sounds hot. 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 (laughs) She got, she's hot. Hot. Yeah. Yeah. She got a nice smile. Look at this nightmare. I just want to say she got a nice smile and a great sense of humor. So (laughs) look at this. Freaking Dementor from Azkaban. Oh, she's... Come on. She, she's fine. Fine? Yeah. She looks like a goddamn Demogorgon. No. Whatever, Lauren. No. Last place for hottest. <laughs> so far, Can we get to Peyton and my, Eli Manning here? I was going to say, she's my number one so far. Oh, my God. Oh my god. I can't believe you. I, I just like a funny woman who Candace Cameron Beer a good business is the idea. hottest one in this group. 
I wish Candace Cameron Beer had been topless on that boat with the prince. Oh, my God. Former- I-, I wish Barbara had been topless. <laughs> Gross. <clears throat> All right. You ready to hear about Peyton and Eli Manning? No. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> um, Eli apparently forgot that TV generally has some restrictions. During a broadcast in September, um, he raised his two middle fingers to imitate how some people, kids in Philadelphia, used to to greet him whenever the New York Giants played the Eagles. I'm sure you can blur that out, right? He said at, before being informed, no, producers could not react quickly enough. Post-commercial break, he was very sorry. Earlier, I did the double bird. I guess that's frowned upon, so I apologize if I offended anybody. <laughs> now, <laughs> now this one I is up there for insincere apology. I like it. I like this one. Earlier, I did the double bird. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, is it just calling it? Or if he was truly sorry, he'd be like, "Earlier, I raised my middle fingers on television. I realized that you know they weren't able to edit it out. I'm sorry. I thought they would be able to edit it out. No, he goes, "Hey, earlier, I did the double bird. And it was sick. It was <laughs> fucking sick. I get. I guess that's frowned upon. I guess that's frowned upon." I mean, I don't frown upon it. I think it rules. Uh, they just informed me that the double bird ain't cool no more. Oh, I apologize if I offended anybody. <laughs> I guess doing the double bird ain't badass. Am I right? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry if I offended anybody. <laughs> Yeah, I think you're right. This is definitely in the insincere category. Cool. I agree. Definitely insincere. So this was um this was specifically Eli Manning who did this. So um I guess as far as you know, I, I'm just gonna say this uh, like I said, I I wanna pick a woman for the hottest. I'm gonna say no. You're gonna, gonna say, say no. 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 Look, he looks like he's smelling something bad. This does literally look like he smelled a <laughs> fart on the field. <laughs> like, oh, that smells bad. Hey, whoever whoever <laughs> farted. Double bird double for you. Double bird for you. A double bird that farts on the field. <laughs> and this last person mispronounced soul in what? February. Uh, I know about this one. This one's funny. Uh, the Golden Globe Awards enlisted 30 rock star Tracy Morgan to announce the winner of the best original score <laughs> in a motion picture. And the Golden Globe goes to Saul, the comedian announced. <laughs> Long pause. Soul, he corrected himself, starting to laugh as the audience cracked up. Morgan explained his mistake in a tweet that night. Sorry, Soul. I was thinking about the pizza I was going to get from my guy Sal on the way home. (laughs) And really, it seemed just like something Tracy Jordan would do. And what's great is they they do have a video of this, so I will... uh... Wait, they said Tracy Jordan. What? Go back up. Yes, they did. They did say Tracy Jordan because uh, they said it's something that Tracy Jordan would do. His character, Tracy Jordan. Oh, 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 oh. Yes. You do know that that's the name of his. Uh, yes, I, 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 I. Yes. I didn't just make like a loud buzzing noise when I plugged that in, did I? No. Really? Are you sure? Oh. No. It's turned down. That's why. I, I'm yeah. pretty smart in doing that. All right, here we go. This is the video of this happening. Golden Globe goes to Sal. <laughs> we must follow our soul. dreams because we only have one life to live and one soul, <laughs> and this soul is happy to date. Now, that's just classic. That's just adorable. I think this is most sincere, personally. <laughs> <laughs> this, uh, sorry, soul. I was thinking about the pizza I was gonna get on my from my guy Sal. You know, this is very sincere. Sorry, soul. <laughs> right? It's like I'm just gonna be honest. This is what happened. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, I think this is most sincere. So, okay, this is the last one that we've gone through. So, uh, uh, so most sincere. Are we gonna give this to uh, uh, Tracy Morgan? I think I that's my vote. 
Okay. Most sincere Tracy Morgan is Martha most Beckett. insincere. I, I'm I'm torn between uh, uh, the Demi Lovato's and and the 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 Manning, the Peyton Manning one. Hmm. You know. Most for most insincere. Yeah, I'm torn between those two because both of them were very insincere. You don't think Eli Manning's was incredibly insincere? I think it's. I'm torn between Demi Lovato's because theirs was also insincere. Wait, you said Demi Lovato and Eli Manning? Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. I'm I'm leaning more towards Eli Manning. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Demi Lovato's was a bit insincere, but this one just it. I guess that's frowned upon. That's the <laughs> most insincere. That's that's what really kicks it for me. I guess that's frowned upon. All right, I guess we're we're giving it to Eli Manning. Now, um, hottest, most bangable, Barbara. Hands mm-hmm. down. No, yes. I don't think so. Yes, you're not going to go with my girl Candace Cameron Beer. No, I'm going with Barbara. <sighs> I think it's a tie. It's a tie. We can we can call a it a tie. tie. Barbara is last place. That woman looks like a barn animal. Don't say that about my Barbara. <laughs> you take that back. You apologize. I'm sorry, Barbara. <laughs> I apologize, Barbara. I I I, I, call, I called you a barn animal. I guess that's frowned upon. <laughs> I so I apologize if I offended anybody. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and I'm going to give James Corden the most pandering award just because that's who he is as a human being. Oh, yeah. He's <laughs> a human pander machine. Yeah. I'll just say what people like me to say. So I think we did it. We gave out all the awards. Jesus Christ. And that was that was the 2022. That was. No, I'm sorry. The I'm sorry. 2021. 2021. Uh, celebrity, celebrity apology, apology awards. awards. Celebrities. Apology. Celebrity. Awards. Apology. Celebrity. Apology. Awards. 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 <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. What'd you learn today? Gosh, I learned that. <laughs> I learned that uh, if you go to the sexy said sex ed summer camp, the ropes course is a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what I learned today? Um, I learned that. Uh, <laughs> I learned that some people frown upon the double bird. <laughs> I guess, I guess some people <laughs> frown upon it. <laughs> All right. Uh, join us next week. Go follow us on uh, Instagram, Working Crass Pod. Please uh, share our podcast with uh, other people if you're listening to it. Uh, we really appreciate uh, the feedback we've gotten so far. So thank you very much. Yeah. Good. Bye. Bye.